Today is a special video because we're going to be going over the probably number one reason why we made champs this year and it was because we really worked on our desert siege. We had one VOD session where we just took an hour of just basically stealing team strats and trying to create our own type of game plan going into each desert siege. Uh, it ended up working. We went 5-1 and one in stage 4 on the map. We had the best offensive win rate and best of defensive win rate during that period. And it was crucial to our miracle run going to champs. So this is a good one. And we're going to break down basically our offenses first, then the defenses. And uh, we'll show you how we did it. So starting off with our patented B hit here. This is our bread and butter. We would always use this, um, especially in round one, just because we were so comfortable with how to play and, and get this bomb down. So what we had here was we had Paco and Kiz. Kiz would be the bomb carrier for this and they would go uh, over here to R1, what we would call it, and they would team nade either this fence spot here or this castle spot here, two different places that teams would really uh, play on their defenses. And they would try and just hit a nade, see if they can at least back somebody off so that kids could get the plant here. We had Paul number one here. He was going to be sniping uh, the cross to see if anyone would go to castle and either cross to mound or, or stay at castle. And then we would have Krim uh, gun here and he would be both watching over uh, to the top of this platform here in case anyone was playing you know in this little corner and trying to head glitch this this platform here or playing on the fence spot he, he could have eyes on this entire part of the map for the bomb carrier and Paco here and then as we go and move down to where the actual plant was going on we'd have Paco get Kiz out to bomb and he would be watching this specific lane here. It was a really important position for Paco because it, it was so hard for them to actually kill him. Uh, the biggest part would be, you know, if you can get a double nade on this box here, it would be the best part uh, or the best way to kill him. But unfortunately for them, you know, it was so hard for them, them to kill him because you'd get Kiz right on bomb and you'd have him staring over bomb and you'd have uh, Krim like helping him out there too. So. If you wanted to peek this, it was so hard for the defense, so that the best way that they could do it was, or the best way that they could deny the bomb plant was trying to coordinate a double nade themselves onto the B site with this guy here and this guy on the mound or castle. Thing is, if 8 opens himself up at all, Paco is getting this kill because he's using AR here. So it was our patented B play and we just wanted to get the bomb down. And from that, we'd then have Kiz get the bomb down and he would then play... Uh, a late lurk towards mid so he'd get the bomb down and instantly go mid and he'd either cut through this alt mid alley and try and get anyone that might be rotating from uh, tower here or just play mid and try and cut out, cut out anyone that was rotating uh, specifically just from A. So that was the A push or the B push sorry and then at that moment you know we have the bomb plant we have a late lurker mid we just need to stay alive as long as possible you know as we saw at stage four major you know kids was even able to use the the wall bank spot uh that we found and that was a huge you know boost for us because you know now that we didn't even need to have him lurk we could just have him stay top secret here and then wall bang the bomb because uh he would only need to use a sub so he would try and get that quick plant you'd have paka watching over him Paul would snipe or, or use an AR sometimes and then watch the pinch afterwards. And, uh, you know, for counters, um, you know, there was a, a hard B counter that teams would do where they'd send two people uh, B side here and rush R1. The thing is, you know, Krim gets the timing on them that he sees. And so these guys are ready for the gunfight, Kiz and Paco. So that would usually end up in the trade favor for us. And so, yeah, the only time we really would lose these type of rounds were if the bomb wasn't planted at all and they were going to hit that double nade on kids playing the bomb or if Paco dies here from a double nade or if they you know fully hit out a triple out at a quickly and we don't pick up the pinch in time so those were the three main counters but that was our bread and butter and uh it really helped us in our offenses on this map so moving on to our default a hit this is something we took from toronto and we just had Krim go outer here with an AR. And then these three guys would all basically chow this alt mid at the same time. You'd have Paul stay water tower here. Uh, Paco would actually take bomb for us in these rounds when we were going A for our default. And he would try and get out to bomb as quickly as possible with kids watching over him too. Uh, so you had three people basically going at the same time, coordinating with each other. As well at the same time, we'd have kids and Paco double nading 
uh, top tower here. So they throw nades, try and get anyone tower with a double nade, or at least back them down a little bit just so we can get that bomb plant down. So you'd have them getting him out to bomb here. The, the only way that they would stop this is if they really countered A themselves and pushed out uh, through A like and played on bomb or something and we didn't hit the nades tower or even played here on this T2 area and somehow caught Paco off guard here. Uh, but he's checking that first most, most of the time when he's trying to go and plant the bomb. So we actually do hit the nade on this round uh, on the guy top tower and it's a clean bomb plant for us. After he's watching water tower, Paul would go and move over to play uh, the flank spot. So he'd play over here in this little corner. It was a really nice credit corner that you use or he'd play like this outhouse spot. He's just watching our entire pinch so he can see everything that would be going around uh, or anyone that would try and be pinching through, you know, R2, R1, or even deep through the spawn. So he was our main pinch watcher. We'd have Paco plant the bomb and then he would go over to what we would call T2 and he would be the one getting bomb checked. So he'd, he'd be basically just watching this alley and you'd have Krim watching over him. So they would play this cross here. So Porter's main job was just, you know, keep Paco alive so he can get bomb checked. So he would watch over him here and uh, get anyone that could be, you know, pinching him through this way. Paco would, would watch this lane and watch any bomb checks. And then we'd have Kiz, who again would play a, a late lurk mid. So he'd, he'd play inside here and possibly sometime, you know, flank through entirely or, you know, just go through the bottom and stay there. But you'll see here, we get the bomb down. They're just playing safe on bomb. We have Paul with the deep pinch. You know, he might be out of the play, but he's just doing his job. He's just watching the entire pinch. And he's I, I think he's actually able to get one here. He is, so number two ends up trying to flank through R2, which we would call it. He gets the, the pinch and uh, at least he would get info. If he doesn't get the kill, he would get info that they're pinching and then Porter would turn for it if he did call it out. Kiz gets one on the late lurk through mid. And from there, it's just an easy, you know, you see Paul doesn't even get the, the kill here at first, uh, but then he's able to pick it up. So again, number four gets a number kill on number seven here as you know, Porter gave it up to watch the pinch but Paco is there for the trade anyways. So it was really good teamwork play and a, uh, a really nice default A for us. Uh, you know, the only counters that we would have, I would say would be, you know, if they fully countered A or completely, you know, caught Porter off guard here because he's the one watching over Paco on bomb. So if he dies, it, it kind of ruins the entire setup. Uh, and if it was a, a good double nade on bomb too, you know, that was another way that they could counter us there. So that was our A hit. So I'll quickly go over the mid hit that we would occasionally do. We'd have Porter either P2 or Gun here, and he would kind of bait out a little B hit that, that we would usually do. And the rest of the team, they would uh, hit out mid. So we'd actually have Paco quickly watch the R1 pinch in case they were doing something really quick R1, you know, pushing through. And he would just watch that for a little bit uh, while the rest of the two guys hop in through the window or, or through this, this bustable window and take mid themselves and try and teamwork it, uh, bottom mid and then top mid after that. So you'll see here, Paco watches the pinch and then quickly goes and joins his teammates. They don't see anything mid. And from this, uh, it was just an option play at this point. It was like, you know, what do we see here? B side, well, what do we, you know, think they're playing A side? And then we'll just commit to something and we'll go back to basically the default stuff that we would do either B or A. But here we would just start off differently with, with a little mid pressure and see if we can get any pick that way. So our game plan on defense was basically, you know, work of blood and then work as a team after that to pick the team apart. Because, you know, we realized on our offenses in the stages prior to that, we were getting first blooded and then we would all drop and we wouldn't even get a single kill on offense sometimes. So what we wanted to do was get that first blood and then group up, work together after that. So our standard basic spread was Paul would either play, you know, at this spot with an AR watching over for the A cross, or he'd use a sniper. Sometimes he'd snipe like bottom tower here for anyone that could be crossing alt mid, or sometimes he'd snipe, you know, through this little crack and see if anyone was pushing out through outer A. And then on the other side of the map, we had Kiz. He would play this fence spot or around this Jeep area, and Porter would either play the castle or the mound here. And the big thing for or actually also Paco would be the one going mid for us. He would go top or bottom mid, but his job was basically to finesse. And sometimes he would, you know, roam. Sometimes he'd play on A with 
with Paul, or sometimes he'd play on B with the other guys, but for the most part, he was top mid, you know, usually in this rubble area or playing this top mid window or this cut uh, where the, you know, the flower pots are watching, you know, the A cross there as well. So those were the main spots that we would play. And for this, it was really on Kiz and, and Porter to teamwork B for, because we didn't want, you know, the team to get a clean plant down. So it was really important for them to stop the plant at all costs. So our big part was, you know, let's teamwork our nades. And that's what they would do. So they would uh, either be castle or mound porter here and he would be jeep or, or fence spot. And they would try and coordinate a double nade onto R1 for the most part. And what they would do is coordinate first, uh, I think it would be porter who would nade on bomb. And if the guy tried to, you know, back off and he wasn't starting to get the plan already, Kiz would then nade R1 because, you know, you'd want to back off after you get naded. And the thing is, if you're backing off, you're going to be backing off to R1 to, be, to play safe in, in this alley here. So we wanted to try and nade him as he's trying to back off and kill him that way. So either one nade on bomb or one nade R1 or both of them towards R1 because this was still an, an area that teams would really like to play uh, when they were going B. On the other side, we really want to try and nade together at the water tower because that was just a super common spot that teams would play or uh, or nade specifically on bomb for a retake. So that was the main spots. And, and for the most part, we were really good at, at getting bloods on this map. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if we, we got the blood here. We, we may have gotten the trade. Uh, but from there, you know, you'd see us all group up and, and wrap together either through their side or from our side and try and retake it from there. I think... We do end up winning this, winning this round versus Minnesota. We retake uh, their side and, and get the trade on number seven there. And then I think it's Kiz or, or someone's able to get this huge kill on number six uh, who was mid. And then it's a 2v1. They end up getting the kill and the diffuse. So that was the main defense plan. You know, courting our nades, getting a first pick, and then working together from there. Um, I, that was the default one. I'll take you into our, our counter A that we would sometimes do as well. So here was our counter A. What we'd have is a uh, crim would stay B side just to meet some type of resistance in case they ended up going with the B push. So he'd play either like this this plat spot or at the castle here, and he would just try and at least stop them or hinder them at some point to you know give them a little pressure uh, to not plant yet. And then we'd have three other guys basically push through alt mid and through A to try and basically hard counter any A push. You know, if they ended up going A, we'd hopefully win those trade battles or at least put some type of pressure on them. And if they ended up going B, you know, we'd have Porter getting the info them going B and then all three of these guys would hit out through the pinch together and it'll be a super quick pinch. So either way, if they were going A or B, it was a nice teamwork player where you could just straight up counter the site. And, and from there, you could then, you know, fully push out, you could group together and push through mid and, and try and do something there. But for the most part, we just wanted to do a quick pinch or a full counter towards the A side. And uh, we just have, you know, Paul watching over them with an AR and Kiz and, and Paco would try and get a first blood through through A. I would say the only other, you know, adjustment that, they, that we would do from our common spread in this would be, you know, sometimes Kiz would go bottom mid with Paco and try and wall bank through this uh, little, you know, wooden door and try and get a first blood on any one water tower there. Or, you know, kids would sometimes push up through this this uh, top plat uh, on top of B and see if you can get any pick water tower there as well. So there were little adjustments here and there, but these were our main defaults for what we were doing on both offense and defense. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was super crucial for us uh, in our miracle run towards champs. So I, I just want to give you guys a little breakdown of what we told the players and how they executed it in the game.